the awkward moment as we sit down yeah, in front yeah. of the camera. Okay, once again, I'm here with James, and we're just doing a little tech talk, and uh, I'm going to let James do most of the talking. So, go ahead, James. <laughs> so, uh, so okay, Chris, uh, I think uh, we were talking about uh, different data structures mm -hmm. at one time. It was, it was a really neat conversation. I thought we could talk about it a little bit for your channel. And um, so I want to talk about uh, just data structures in general, but maybe we'll talk about hash tables eventually. So I think great. you talked to, asked about hash tables. So um, let's try to talk about a situation because it's easier to think about t things in terms of like an actual situation. Like let's suppose you were writing a program that was going to uh, keep track of maybe the number of times a particular IP address was was fed to it, right? So you, okay. have, you have a Python program or something, and or maybe C program, and it has an input, and you can input IP addresses, and it would try to store them and keep track of how many unique IP addresses or the count of each unique IP addresses. So let's talk about how that might work, and we'll talk about how that might scale, Okay. and then we'll talk about hash tables. Do you want me to say how I would do yeah, that? Yeah, please. That'd be a great idea, actually. Yeah. Okay. So I would basically just do a... Um, a grep for that IP okay. and then type it into WC-L and that would tell me how many times that line, that string has shown up in lines as long as everything's on. This is great. This is great. Right. Okay. So so you, you would you would do a grep of, uh, say that one more time. A grep of the IP address. So let's say it was a text file. Right, right. And it had all these random IP addresses okay. in it okay. and I wanted IP123. Just okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. I would say cat that file yeah. into grep, and I would grep one, two, three, right. and I'd pipe that into wc-l, yeah. and that would give me the line count. So grep would say only lines with one, two, three on it, and I would get the line count, okay. and that would be perfect. perfect. And I'd pipe so that into a variable. This is so. a great, this is the perfect example, because okay. that's so horrible, <laughs> and we can talk about why. Um, no, it's it, one of those things probably be good on small scale, but you're saying right, on a big right, right. scale. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to okay. talk about data structures and why they're important. And, and uh, you described how you do it in Bash, mm -hmm. but this is very similar to um, how you might do it inside of a program. But let's just talk about, like, uh, you know what that might look like in C or Python. Mm -hmm. it, you know, instead of storing a file, it's supposed to be stored to a data structure like like an array or and a list. To iterate through it. Iterate through, it. through it, right? And so one thing, even using your method, we can improve it a little bit already. But um, so one thing you were saying is you could you could you would store each each value every time it came in in the array, right? You you so if I send you one two three a hundred times, your list would be a hundred. Mm -hmm. Right, so it might be better even just to um, this is not still not a good way to do it, but it might be better to to just uh, store uh, one two three four and then in another array say you know oh that's my one hundredth time I've gotten that mm -hmm. right. So, but let's talk about uh, you know well how many IP addresses are possible right? So sure, we have one hundred and twenty four. 256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256256
uh, arbitrary data. Sure. It but it's in a string, not a hash table. It's it's in a it's a string representation of what could be a hash table, okay. an object, an array, or any combination of those things. Right. Obviously, my my understanding, I have no clue what a hash table is. That's no, why no, I'm no, throwing fine. things out it's here. Right. <laughs> yeah. So so one example you do know though is you do know a dictionary. A dictionary yes. is a hash table, right? Well, yeah, and, I know that it is. I don't actually understand it. Right. Okay. So let's talk about what this would look like in C though, because it'll be more detailed. And it would, might be something more interesting. Okay, so so IP addresses work great. So let's suppose we took those those numbers, you know, uh, two fifty six, th- you know, th- zero through two fifty six, the four of them, and we we computed zero through two fifty five. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, and we and what we did was we converted those four numbers into one number that represented that, right? That should okay. be easy, because these are just ones and zeros. We've arbitrarily broken them up into four, but we could just make it one big number. The, mm-hmm. the, any any combination of those four numbers would give you that unique number, right? Right. This makes sense, okay? Sure. So we'll say that's the key, right? That's the that's the unique key for that IP address, okay? okay? So what we want to do is find a way that we can quickly figure out where on our array or our list it belongs, or in your case, if it was a file, what line number would we expect to see it on? Okay. okay. Uh, I think we, actually let's use that file example because that's great. Okay. Let's pretend we use that file, but the file stores the unique ones, right? It won't. We, we won't store. Um, we won't store uh, every time it comes in. Just every every time another one comes in that's the same, we'll just increase the number next to it or something. Okay. Okay. So how do we know what line number to look at? On? Well, so an easy way to do it, an arbitrary way to do it, is just say, well, whatever that number is. Okay, we'll say it's on that line number. Uh, so the only problem with that is it's, it could be a really big number. And um, the IP example is a really simple example, but uh, it could be something like a string. And coming up with an arbitrary number for a string, it's going to be a very big number. Um, so what we would do is is um, we would we would make uh, an array, or let's suppose the line numbers. Let's use line example. Well, we could cap it. We could say, well, we know we're never going to get more than a million IPs, even though we we don't know that it goes from zero to a million. It's going to go way beyond that, but we know we'll never get more than a million unique ones. Okay. And if we do, we'll come up with something to do with that later. <laughs> but let's suppose we never get more than a million. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll do um, uh, uh, modulus. Have you ever heard of modulus before? Mm. And it's a little percent symbol when every time you're using uh, programming, right? It tells you the remainder. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. So touch the remainder. So what we do is we have let's, uh, we have a list that goes up to a million, and let's suppose we get the IP of a million and one. We run modulus on it for the size of this file, which is a million lines, what we said, and it'll give us the number one. Okay, and that's where we store the IP of a million and one. We would store it in the first position. But wait, okay, the smart people watching the video are going to say, well, what do we do when we get one? Because then there's a problem. So what we actually do is, so when we get one, we look at the first position, and we see, hey, something's already in the first position, and it's not one. Okay, and we go to the next position, and we put it there, okay? And we, there would be position two. Okay. Okay? And so then the next one to come in might be two, and again, we look at two. Or maybe it's two million and one, right? That's a better one example. It's two million and one. We see the first position is already taken by one. The next position is already taken uh, the first position was taken by a million one, the next position was taken by one, we put it in the third position. And this way we can fill that up. Now, how many checks did I make to store the, the, the hardest one I've done so far? Uh, the hard, how many checks did I make? Three. Three. Now, with your example, how many checks would you make if you stored the list? Uh, you still would have only done three at this point, I guess, because I've only given you three. Mm-hmm. But you can see how you, you'd make a lot as time went on. And I'm getting very, very close very, very quickly. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, mine's grepping through the file for each. Right, right, right. Each on each average, possible. you know, for a million spaces, on average, you'd look at a half a million. Uh, for mine, I we would say that mine scales uh, constant, right. not linear. So it doesn't matter. The beautiful part about mine is whether I have ten, whether I have a million, whether I have a trillion, Mine scales very well. Mm-hmm. The only time mine doesn't scale well is if I didn't leave enough room, right? If I didn't put things in the right places, right? If I didn't leave enough space, these are called hash collisions. When when two things occupy the same cell mm-hmm. for the first try, and I have to look at the next one, these are called hash collisions. And if I don't manage that well, this is going to be really bad. It's going to start to become bad. Of course, at its worst, it's still only going to be as bad as yours. But at its <laughs> best... It's going to be a constant time. And there's even another part to mind that I didn't even mention. Yeah. If I need to figure out certain IPs, if I had a long list of the IPs, I'd have to sort unique those and then iterate through them. Well, so I'm not just grepping the file 
I also have to sort the original list that I'm looking for, where you're kind of making a database so you already know what you're looking for. Right. So in in in, in your example, uh, and I want to make sure I don't take up too much of your time, but your example, uh, uh, you know, if you talk about sorting, that's just something you'd have to do every time you're trying to find something of interest. So that might not be an ideal thing to do. Is sorting. Uh, uh, sorting doesn't necessarily scale well either, and um, if you have to do it every time you have a question, it's, it's, it's not typically a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the hash table is always going to find you the good point to go, no matter how how uh, uh, big that hash table gets. Right? You're you're going to always be able to look it up. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you want to get the count, uh, you're just going to then you, again use that key and look at the value associated with that count. Uh, and for for let's just talk real quick because I know the file was a great example, but let's just talk about what that might look like. I can see we would allocate an array of a certain size, okay. right? And then we would modulus around that array, right? And, and, and that array would basically essentially have to store uh, a key and a value. It'd probably be like some type or some struct that would store both the key and the value or the list of values, okay? In this case, the value might be the count or it might be the time it came in, whatever we decided to do. So let me say this. Yeah. I'm still a little lost. Okay, great. Let's end this video here. Okay. And you think it, in our next talk, maybe you can draw something out? Yeah, let's do the little try to put it on the board. Great. So thank you for watching. Please visit Vilt that. Please visit ViltsbyChris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Thank you, James, for talking with us today, and I look forward to getting a visual in the next video. Great. Thanks again.